Rep. Eskamani, you recognized. Thank you so much, Chair. So members, I am not a lawyer. I'm the daughter of working class immigrants and the lover of small businesses and someone who unapologetically challenges the biggest of businesses because someone has to do it. And I'm proud to be someone that is very skeptical with policies, especially policies like this, and asks the tough questions and tries to dig into the weeds to figure out what, what, will, this, what will this actually mean for everyday people in, the, in its current posture. And I've heard a lot of conversations about a balance, a balance between workers and a balance between businesses. And, and I, I don't know if I agree to that, that structure. I think it's a dynamic where everyone can win. And I think it is possible where it's a bill that embraces um, every, every stakeholder, whether it's the business owner, whether it's the worker, whether it's the visitor, the shopper, the consumer. Um, and it was already outlined by my colleagues and some members in the audience too, that guidelines are what's needed. And I have to agree with that point. For those who don't know, District 47, where I proudly serve, it's home to four cities. Uh, we have some of the coolest parts of Central Florida. Uh, we have the Milk District, Mills 50. Um, we have the downtown um, bar scene. Uh, we, we, are, we, are, we, have, we have Park Avenue off Winter Park. I mean, it is one of the coolest places to call home. We have every type of small business you can think of, especially restaurants. As a vegan, there's always options for me. And, and, and throughout this pandemic, the issues that our businesses have come to me for, specifically our small businesses, has not been this. It has been around rent relief, business interruption insurance coverage. Uh, for my bars, it was reopening after they were told to close with very little guidelines. And the CFO mentioned blessings to Secretary Bashir's. I want to echo those blessings. He has been a godsend during this and trying to find ways for businesses to still operate, um, uh, to make money and, and keep their doors open. Um, and in fact, you know, in the middle of this pandemic, um, back in April, we actually launched a Save Florida small business petition in my district. We had about 1,700 different small businesses sign on to this letter. And the asks that, that they crafted for us included an immediate 90-day interest fee deferral on commercial rent, mortgages, commercial loans, credit card debt, a uh, 90-day extension on the payment deadline to the Florida sales and use tax and property taxes. Um, they wanted to see an increase into the bridge loan program, which I'll talk about soon. Um, they wanted negotiations with banks and lenders so that uh, when we saw this slowdown of the CARES Act being implemented, y'all know what I'm talking about, you were all there, we were waiting for IDLE loans to come down and PPP loans to come down. It was a disaster with some of the larger banks preferencing big businesses over the smaller businesses, if it wasn't for the second round of CARES Act, I would have hundreds of small businesses in my district who got nothing. And, and of course, you know, when we had the, uh, the state's executive order shut down, uh, there was nothing for insurance companies. I reached out to the CFO's office for the Office of Insurance Regulation. All I got was a memorandum making recommendations for, for insurance companies, but nothing mandated which I'm not surprised to know there's hundreds of lawsuits filed because that's where the, the meat of the issue is. And, and what kills me as we have this conversation is that small businesses are struggling right now. And thank God we have the federal government who finally passed a bill, so more money's coming down the pipe. But, but Florida as a state has only allocated $50 million towards small businesses while we gave away half a billion to the state's largest corporations in a tax refund in the same month. And that 50 million was gone after 38,000 small businesses applied and only 1,000 got it. And we continue to ask the state of Florida through the executive branch, but now we're in session, maybe we can actually do something about it. But you know what, what will, really frustrates me is that we have all these like very real small business challenges, and I'm not saying this isn't one of them, but the fact that it's already very difficult to prove some sort of impact by COVID-19, and the fact that there are no guidelines or businesses to even meet to say they are setting a safety standard, is what frustrates me because we all want our economy back up and running. I want to get this vaccine out to everyone as fast as possible so we don't have to even say the word COVID-19 in a few months. And, and I want to do whatever I can to make sure that my small businesses are going to survive. But the fact that the biggest phone calls I get are around, I need rent relief and I need my unemployment and nothing comes to me about this issue tells me that 
that there are other prioritizations that we need to focus on, at the very least integrate into this bill to make it a package that is actually a winning issue for both the worker and for the small business. So with that, I will be opposing the bill. Look forward to seeing its uh, evolution. I know the, rep, the sponsor will work very hard on that, um, but the CFO mentioned that this is an emotional issue for him. It is for me too. It is for me too. And that's why I'll be standing against the bill today. Thank you, Chair.